You don't need analyzing. It is not so surprising. This is an Ethel Merman fan. These things, once they come to me, they stay with me. That's the way a collection works. Right here's the playbill. It's by Irving Berlin. Two in a row, these two. It opens in October of 1950, and this playbill is from May 21st, 1951. Same, same, same. Leland Hayward this time. This was a gift, and it was a gift from John McDaniel. He invited me on the Rosie O'Donnell show, and he came to the makeup chair and gave me this one. Look, the, the flyer inside is for... Oklahoma. I want to get this framed. This is the original one and back here it tells you how many performances it's played and it's still fresh as a daisy and gay as a lark. This is of course still playing in 1950. Uh, the musicals coming in this year, well, one that wins all the uh, awards, Guys and Dolls. You know, still holding down cigarettes and cars. There's cute Dick Powell, Mr. June Allison, and and girdles. Some things just never change. I don't think there's any after show dining and dancing. But, um, we've kind of moved away from that. We have your intermission interview. How many of these have you seen? So I'm curious if these pay to be in there because of course now they do. You're like, oh, these are all the shows in New York. They are not all the shows in New York. They are all the shows in New York who can afford to run that ad. But um, but this is fun. Flahooly, Kiss Me Kate, South Pacific, The King and I, Darkness at Noon, starring Claude Rains, which is my friend Richard Adams' favorite actor. So let's go to the title page. It's Ethel Merman and Call Me Madam with Paul Lucas, Alan Hewitt, and Russell Knipe. Music and lyrics by Irving Berlin, book by Howard Lindsay and Russell Krauss, directed by George Abbott, Mr. Abbott. Dances and musical numbers staged by Jerome Robbins. Scenery and costumes designed by Raoul Pendubois. And Miss Merman's dresses by... I was first starting out in New York and trying to be sophisticated. I had to ask somebody how to say this. And it was Mom Boucher. However, it's actually Man Bacher. The thing is, he was a kid from Chicago, and he went to Paris, and he was designing things, and people were picking up his designs in Paris, and they brought them back. Everybody just assumed it was Mom Boucher. Either, I think, is perfectly acceptable at a cocktail party. Probably Mom Boucher would be better, and then I'd be the annoying person who said, you know, it's actually Man Bacher. Okay, we have Jay Blackton. Is, uh, he dropped the S. Oh, we haven't seen this for a long time, the Rogers Pete ad. This cast as they appear list. If you look, the very first one is Mrs. Sally Adams, played by Ethel Merman. Neither the character of Mrs. Sally Adams nor Ethel Merman resembles any other person alive or dead. They were all very proud of that. That was in there kind of as a joke, but... Really, this was a very uh, gentle and affectionate send-up of Pearl Mesta. Uh, Pearl Mesta is President Truman's ambassador to Luxembourg. Two mythical countries. One is called Lichtenberg, and the other is the United States of America. Oh my gosh, and look, Martin and Lewis. They're going to be happy. Go crazy at the Copa. And shoes. <laughs> Still shoes. Call Me Madam isn't necessarily that big hit-wise, but uh, it's a very entertaining score. The first, the first one is Mrs. Sally Adams, sung by everybody, but then it's the hostess with the mostess on the ball. Terrific song, and that's kind of become, if somebody's the hostess, they're the hostess with the mostess. Not the priestess with the leastess, but the hostess with the mostess. Money, 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 money. Can you use any money today? Believe in yourself. Try this little test. Light up either cigarette, take a puff, don't inhale, but slowly let the smoke come through your nose. Then do exactly the same thing with the other cigarette. Go on. Believe in yourself. <laughs> Fun people are in this. Somebody you already know. One, Dolores Goodman. <clears throat> Leland Hayward is the producer. So he has a full staff here 
We now have a musical contractor and an assistant conductor, a wardrobe mistress, master carpenter, master electrician, general manager, company manager. But in the 30s, these are not jobs that have uh, titles and uh, credits. I think it's interesting also, there have been understudy lists before, but Ethel Merman has never had an understudy listed. This is the first time I've seen it today, but Mrs. Sally Adams, Nancy Andrews. Uh, she did have understudies. Mary Jane Walsh was her understudy for Anna Get Your Gun. It did go on for the vacation. We also know famously Elaine Stritch was the understudy and uh, has a great story, of course, in her show about doing Pal Joey up in New Haven and doing Call Me Madam on Broadway. Let's take a look at the bio today. The playbill now has the the is very little. It's getting less prominent. It's getting more playbillish. Call me madam. And the bio reads as follows. Ethel Merman, Sally Adams. Miss Merman first made the nation sit up and listen with her infectious rendition of I Got Rhythm in George Gershwin's Girl Crazy. And since then, the nation has been agreeing with her. It is almost an axiom among theatrical producers that the presence of Ethel Merman in a musical is a guarantee of its success. And among composers that the shortest line to the hit parade is to have Ethel Merman sing their tunes. In 1945, she hit the bullseye in all departments as the irrepressible Annie Oakley in another Irving Berlin hit, Annie Get Your Gun, in which she added, they say it's wonderful, doing what comes naturally, sun in the morning and show business to the list of ballads she made into hits. Miss Merman's previous procession of successes include Something for the Boys, Dewberry Was a Lady, Panama Hattie, Stars in Your Eyes, Take a Chance, and Scandals. From these productions, her inimitable projection of Life is Just a Bowl of Cherries, Rise and Shine, I Got Religion, You're an Old Smoothie, Friendship, and Edie Was a Lady caused them to be sung, hummed, whistled, and played all over the country. It is appropriate to note here that two of her biggest hits, Anything Goes and Red Hot and Blue, were written by Howard Lindsay and Russell Krauss, authors of Call Me Madam. Her vigorous humor, gusto, and chanting were inscribed on celluloid in Follow the Leader, We're Not Dressing, Kid Millions, The Big Broadcast, Strike Me Pink, Alexander's Ragtime Band, and Straight Place and Show. That's it. I've done this show, I've done a full run of it at 42nd Street Moon. I also have done it in the Luxembourg Embassy in Washington, D.C. I've done it in the American Embassy in Luxembourg and had the opportunity to take this show there for the very first time. They laughed so hard at the idea of a tunnel that went from the uh, ambassador's residence to the palace. That, that, that really made them laugh. The show went to uh, New Haven to try out. Well, Merman, as always, got phenomenal reviews. The show itself, was, it got some kind of mixed reviews. Uh, the first act was terrific. Hostess with the Mostess got it off to a great start, and it traveled and wrapped itself up nicely, ready for act two. And it opened with Mr. Monotony. But as an opening for act two for Call Me Madam, it didn't, it didn't work. Uh, Jerome Robbins asked Irving Berlin to please try again, and Irving Berlin said, what do you want? And Jerome Robbins said, I don't care, just something to dance about. Something to dance about, someone to dance it with. So he got what he wanted. The second act was sort of in need of a big something. And uh, Ethel Merman had taken a liking to Russell Knipe, who played her young press Attaché. I, he, wo he wore glasses, but all through rehearsals, he was trying to take the glasses off and do well, but he was actually having a really hard time. And uh, they told him to just use his glasses, and then they gave him a buzz cut. And he was just this incredibly uh, popular look for young men. Anyway, Ethel Merman was loving him, and she said to Irving Berlin, why don't you give me a duet? with the kid. And that turned into, I hear singing and there's no one there. He's fallen in love with the princess. And Merman says, you don't need analyzing. You're just, you're not sick, you're just in love. 
and it stopped the show and was the was the uh, was the song that did the trick. That's a standard. That's a beloved American show tune. Uh, it left New Haven. It went to Boston, and a very famous story comes around right now. Remember, in the very first Girl Crazy episode, I asked you to remember Clarence Birdseye and his frozen vegetables. Important because there's a famous saying: "Call me Miss Birdseye." This show is frozen. It comes from Ethel Merman. Howard Lindsay and Russell Krauss came to her with tinkering, tinkering, tinkering. And she said to them, boys, call me Miss Birdseye 1950. This show is frozen, not another comma. So she played all the way along through previews and uh, the out of town tryouts, but now it's done. Now, the Tony Awards, everything went to uh, Guys and Dolls. But the interesting thing is, Call Me Madam picked up Best Supporting Actor in a Musical for Russell Knipe and Best Actress in a Musical for Ethel Merman. This will be her Tony. This is it. This is the Tony. You would think that Annie Get Your Gun might have gotten the Tony, but guess what? The Tony Awards don't start until 1947. Uh, we'll talk about Gypsy when we get there. This is the first show uh, Merman made herself a deal where she got 10% of the show. Wherever it went, she had 10% of it, uh, which she thought was fair. She wanted some participation in that. So it seems like the innocence is off of musical theater a little bit. It's become big business. Tomorrow, I'm going to introduce you to the playbill for the Jeep Among the Limousines. Tally ho! That's right. Happy hunting. Now that you know her career, you see why this one wasn't such a, a beloved one. She didn't talk about it much, and she didn't really want you to think about it very much. But uh, it's not as bad, maybe, as she wanted us to think. Um, so, see you then. You're an old smoothie. what I wanted you to silly old smoothie crafty old softy I'll stick like putty to the hands of a boy like you oh. for me you played me for a sap for you you thought you laid a trap. Well, dear, I think it's time you knew. You've done just what I wanted you to do. Hey.